Hello and welcome to The Goggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. On this edition of the podcast, what would a Biden foreign policy look like if he was elected? I'm Peter Lavelle, and I'm joined by George Samuli and Marcus Papadopoulos. Marcus, let me go to you. I, I, I can't help but feel very facetious doing this uh, podcast because you, you have all of these uh, talking heads talking about, well, if Joe Biden wins in November, what kind of foreign policy will he have? And my immediate reaction is, what are you talking about? Even under Trump, American foreign policy has barely changed, maybe a little bit on the margins and some symbolic stuff. So it's basically continuity. And I think also, if you look at the Democratic Convention with this invasion and public profile of failed neocons, we're essentially are warmongers and war criminals. And they have been elevated. I mean, it took the Democratic National uh, Convention to rehabilitate George Bush, a Republican. So I, I, I have to uh, really wonder how fanciful, um, or it just this is just part of the military-industrial complex blob uh, ma- uh, making themselves, uh, telling them how everyone how important they are and their foreign policy nuances. I mean, just the Trump administration's recent sanctions against Lebanon and uh, in Syria should tell you everything. That's going to be continuity, Marcus. Oh, Peter, it's such a tiresome subject to hear every time an American presidential election is on the horizon. We hear from people inside America and outside of America asking, will American foreign policy change? Do these people not have a single brain cell between them? I have been hearing this since 2000 in particular. Um, We saw how relations between Russia and uh, America under Bill Clinton, even though he wasn't in for long, started to deteriorate. But it happened before. That happened really in 99 as a result of America's unilateral and criminal war against the then Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. And then George Bush Jr. comes in and we hear about how there's going to be a new approach to Russia. Well, we know what happened under him. And then Barack Obama says that uh, there's going to be a reset in relations. And then we hear about how Donald Trump is going to revolutionize American foreign policy, no more intervention, and there would be a new relationship with Russia. Now we're hearing it, the same old monotonous drivel about Joe Biden. The reality is that whoever sits in the White House, American, the fundamentals of American foreign policy remain the same. Perhaps methods can change somewhat, but the objectives remain the same. And perhaps, um, Peter, that Donald Trump, um, deep down, was genuine in wanting to change America's stance on Russia. Perhaps Barack Obama was genuine, but both men quickly discovered that once they enter the White House, the machines of the American establishment, as I like to call it, or Donald Trump calls it the deep state, but for me, the term deep state has Ottoman uh, connotations. But either way, deep state or establishment, they come around the individual and they tell the individual in no uncertain terms, this is American foreign policy and there is no discussion about it. And if we're talking about Joe Biden, we can also add this to him. The man has expressed very, very hostile remarks about not just uh, Putin, but Russia as a, ho- as a whole. So if he does become president, there will be no change in American foreign policy, as indeed Iran's supreme leader at the beginning of 2017 said when Donald Trump entered the White House, America will always remain the same old America. Yeah, George, you know, looking back at the Democratic Convention, uh, when foreign policy, actually not much policy of anything was mentioned during that infomercial. Um, but if, even when it kind of veered to, to, to foreign policy, there was never any specifics. It was like restrained, moving forward, you know, uh, you know all this kind of nonsense um, uh, um, um, verbiage all of the time. And it was never really specific. I mean, I don't, I don't know what that means. You know, um, uh, America must always lead. What, what does that mean? Lead into war? Okay. And, and the interesting thing is, Susan, we've had three election, presidential, three election uh, cycles, and the, the public has rejected this. 
but it continues on. And Marcus is right. I kind of like the deep state because it does have Ottoman Empire connotations because I think it's kind of like that. Um, but it's, it's just impervious here. Change when it comes to foreign policy, it's impervious because the it's the inter uh, inter what is it interdepartmental interagency consensus because that's what we found out during the impeachment process is that the president doesn't call the shots when it comes to foreign policy it's the it, it goes to little little uh, uh, green men like Vinman okay they control it all here so I mean again you know spilling uh, spilling all this ink about what kind of pol foreign policy Joe Biden might have. I mean Susan Rice will probably be right uh, uh, his right hand person. Yes. Um, what's interesting is that um, Biden is, is, is the first uh, campaign in quite a long time to promise no change, uh, and a restoration to the status quo, because at least in the past you had Trump, obviously, Obama as well, who promised a change. Uh, even George W. Bush uh, somehow promised a, um, a, humble, building. Yeah, some, a humbler foreign policy. Biden promises another. Biden says, yes, restoration of the status quo, uh, restoration of American leadership. And if you look at the people who are around uh, Biden, um, Anthony Blinken, uh, Michelle Flournoy, um, uh, this uh, Nicholas Burns, these are all people who have been around uh, at, the, at the highest levels of foreign policy in decades. Uh, they move in this world of uh, corporations. Okay. George, you just mentioned those names, okay? And keep uh, uh, our, our viewers keep them in. What is their record of decades of foreign policy expertise? What is their record? Can you sum it up in a few words? Uh, their record is uh, the, the bombing of Yugoslavia. Nicholas Burns is a, a, a veteran of that policy. Uh, Nicholas Burns is a veteran of the Iraq invasion. He worked for, in the Bush administration during Iraq. Um, and then he kind of moved in this in the corporate academic world, you know, a bit of a professorship at Harvard and so on. Michelle Flournoy, uh, she you know, again, she's she's moved in this uh, in this policy uh, wonkish world in years. Um, these all have an absolutely dreadful record. Um, but Biden is selling them, the, or the, and the people who are selling as Biden is that these are, uh, in, are the expressions of wisdom. Uh, these are the safe pairs of hands. Once they're back in charge, foreign policy will be on a, a steady course. So there's, there's even none of the, the promise of uh, Trump that somehow things have gone wrong, we need to change. So Trump, of course, failed to affect that change, just as Obama failed to affect that change. Biden isn't even promising that. Biden is saying, okay, all the old gang is going to be back, and they're going to be doing all the things that they've been doing in decades, making a, a lot of money uh, for themselves, and doing nothing, whatever, to help uh, America. You know, it, it, Marcus, it, what is, it, it would be funny if it wasn't tragic, is that, you know, nothing will change. Well, you know, well, there's not by, by definition, there's no interrogation of what nothing ch would change. I mean, that, that is a record of failure. Uh, I mean, of an unbelievable magnitude. I mean, particularly the, the Middle East, uh, the one catastrophe after another, and there is no learning curve, and the same people get to make the same mistakes over and over again. And, and no one has ever, ever held, held accountable for it. And, and, and through the, the prism of American politics, you know, that, you know, Trump's a failed foreign policy versus going back to the status quo, they're both the same. And there's no one in the media wants to recognize that. Go ahead, Marcus. My response, Peter, to uh, the Democrats would be this. Democrats, you talk about wanting to restore the status quo. I would argue that the status quo has remained in place yeah. under Trump. Yeah. You know, um, yes, there has obviously been resistance between um, the deep state or the establishment and Donald Trump. I mean, that's, that's very, very evident. But let's just judge America over the last four years in its actions. Look what they tried to do in Venezuela. They tried to instigate a coup there, and had it not been primarily for Russia, but, but also Cuba and Iran, then undoubtedly Nicolas Maduro would have been overthrown by the lackey um, who is Juan Guaido. Look at how America has increased its um, hostility and its threatening uh, measures towards Cuba. Um, so there's been no difference there. Of course, though, under Barack Obama, there was what we could call a slight detente, 
between Cuba and America, which I welcomed. But at the same time, I knew the people behind Obama, the real people in power, had not changed their stance on uh, on Cuba. Um, let's have a look at how America is still illegally in Syria and how under Trump, whether he wanted to go ahead with it or not, I don't think, Peter, we will ever truly know. But America directly, militarily attacked Syria on two occasions. And then we have America's stance on, Trump, or, or on Iran, which has become even worse yeah. under Donald Trump. So when the, uh, when, the, when the Democrats say we need to go back to the good old days, you know, it will, if Biden wins, it will be back, back to business. I would say that's an untenable argument because American foreign policy has not changed over the last four years. Maybe outwardly, because there has been obviously um, tension between the you know, unseen permanent government in America on the one hand and Donald Trump on the other. But the actions, the behavior remains exactly the same. And relations actually, Peter, between America and Russia, if you can believe it, have deteriorated even further yeah. over the last four years. No one really thought that once Obama's um, tenure came to an end, that relationships, relations between Mos Moscow and Washington could become, um, uh, could become worse. But indeed, they have become worse. And I suspect, Peter uh, and George, that if Biden becomes president, the relationship will become even more diabolical, if that's imaginable. Which if, that, it, if you can even imagine that, I, I, I want to kind of skip ahead. Um, this upcoming week, we uh, week we have the the uh, the GOP convention, and I was uh, watching some uh, highlights of Fox News earlier today. And uh, one commentator, very pro-Trump, of course, on Fox, said, "You, know, but you know, Trump um, um, uh, destroyed ISIS." And it, and and we're going to hear this over and over again. No, that's not true. It was the Russian. An air force that did that with 20 planes over six weeks okay not a huge investment okay and it's never it's never acknowledged in western media at all okay it's never acknowledged that um uh, irrespective of the administration that uh, um uh, the Syrian proxy civil war was fueled by outside forces by America and its West and its uh, Arab allies. Uh, it's never acknowledged here. So what we're going to all do is keep an eye on what's going to happen here because I'm going to be very interesting interested in how the GOP is going to try to say they did something different and they won't have the status quo. It means they're going to tie themselves up into a pretzel because it won't make any sense at all. George, Marcus, thank you being for uh, being here on the gaggle and I'll see you guys soon. And please like, share and subscribe always.